I'm sitting there. There we go. I'm sorry. For those of you who didn't hear me, I um, said I'm going to try to sing this song, but I have a, a cold or something coming on that I tried to treat with cough medicine, but so far it hasn't helped much. But the song is Adoration. You all know it. I've sang it for you before, and I love it because that's what I do. I adore my Lord. I adore worshiping Him. I adore His presence. And I want Him to know it. I have found the joy of God in His sacred blessed abode. Oh, the comfort of the peace that fills my soul. And the day His courts within far exceedeth all in sin. In his secret presence I'm abiding. I shall see him. I shall see him. I shall see him in his beauty over there. In his likeness I'll behold him. He for me is waiting at the portals of my life the fountain spring now my all to thee i bring thou o lord art all my heart's supreme delight whom have i in heaven but thee none on earth so dear to me Thou alone art altogether lovely, and I shall see him, I shall see him, I shall see him in his beauty over there, in his likeness I'll behold him. He for me is waiting at the portal. How the heavenly chorus rings while my heart in rapture sings. Sweetest anthems of my Savior's joyful praise. He's the fairest of the fair. Nothing can with him compare. He's to me the chief among ten thousand. And I shall see him, I shall see him, I shall see him in his beauty over there. And in his likeness I'll behold him, he for me is waiting at the portals. Take this world for Christ is mine. In his kingdom I would shine. Let me labor all my days and years for him. Perfect love and best of blown. In his presence I have found life is joy supreme and full of glory. And I shall see him, I shall see him, I shall see him in his beauty over there. In his likeness I'll behold him. He for me is waiting at the portals. He for me is waiting at the portals. Amen. I can't wait for that day when I shall see him, when my faith shall be made sight. Praise the Lord. What we experienced this morning I don't think holds a candle. Woo! I don't know how I'm going to be able to take it. We're going to have to have a new body, a glorified body. We're going to have to have something far better than this old vessel right here to contain that. When I shall see him, when all that I have put my faith and trust and hope in comes to fruition and reality, and he's standing there before me. Praise the Lord. I shall see him. Can't wait. Can't wait. Hallelujah.
thinking of that song that we sang. I don't even remember now what the name of it was, but Gushing from the Rock Before Me. <laughs> oh, wow. Gushing from that rock before me. We talked a little bit about that rock this morning in our service and um, how it was a type of Christ. Paul said it was a spiritual rock that followed them through the wilderness. It was a spiritual rock that fed them, that kept them watered. It followed them everywhere they went. Amen. And Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come to me. Amen. They had a rock. They had a supply of water that followed them. Or they had a supply of water where they could go down and they could get a drink. Praise God tonight, as a Christian, you have a supply of endless water that's within you. It's within the walls of your temple. So no matter where the attacks come from, you know one of the favorite uh, tactics of the enemy is to cut your supply of water off. Amen? What do they do? They cut the water supply off to a city. They cut the water supply off to a fortress. But when the water supply is inside your soul, praise God, it don't matter whether the attacks are coming from the outside or the inside, you still got the source of water inside you. Praise the Lord. You're not looking to go down somewhere and get water down here out of a hole in the ground. You've got the source of spiritual life flowing within you. Amen. Be encouraged, saints. You've got the supply. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what did it say there in John chapter 7? This he spoke. I'm in Matthew. Hold on. Let's get to the right book. Verse 39. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. When he was talking about the water and the... Rivers of living water flowing out of your belly. He wasn't talking about some puddle. He wasn't talking about these streams that I see down here on the side of the road that's stagnated, full of junk, full of uh, some kind of scum that grows on the top of it. But he's talking about a river of pure, clean, refreshing, rejuvenating, renewing water. Spiritual water. He said, he spake this of the Spirit. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. They that believed. Have you believed? God's given you his Holy Spirit. He's given it to you. He's just waiting for you to let go of the reins a little bit so you can have more of the fullness of it. He's given you your Spirit. All that believe on Him, they get the Spirit. They got the Spirit. You just need to open up. You need to let go. You need to let God have His way so that the Spirit can have its way within your hearts and within your souls. You've got the source. You've got the spring. You've got the wellspring of eternal life in your heart and in your soul. But all these other things are competing with you. All your passions and heart's desires are competing with that spring of living water and the Spirit of God. I'm not going to go back and preach the whole message from this morning, but there's a couple of points that I did want to pick up because I don't think I hit them this morning. This celebration that Jesus stood up in the middle of is kind of a Jewish thanksgiving. It's their time of rejoicing and thanks, thanking God for His provision in the wilderness. And one of His provisions in the wilderness was that rock of water. And I didn't even talk about this morning, but Jesus was watching this procession. During this Feast of Tabernacles, they would take a golden vessel, and the priests would make a big pompous show as they went down to the river, went down to the brook, to the pool of Siloam. And they would dip their golden pitcher into the water, and then they would make a nice formal possession, this great routine, great pomp and circumstance with this golden vessel full of water out of the pool of Siloam and they would go back up to the temple. 
And when they got up to the temple, they had some rituals and some songs that they chanted and sang as they poured that water out at the base of the altar in remembrance of God's promise to pour His Spirit out upon His people. Then they would take some wine and they would mix that with the water and they would pour that out as a remembrance, as a symbolic thing of the prophecy that God would pour His Spirit out upon His people. I want you to see what Jesus was looking at. They were trying to pour out water. They were trying to get a blessing through the ritual, through the routine of worship. It was meaningless. There was no relationship in that. There was nothing alive in that. And Jesus stood up in the middle of that. And he didn't say politely. He didn't say nicely. And he didn't say real calm and quiet. And oh, this long-haired hippie Jesus that everybody's got in their mind. He stood up and said, listen to me. If any man thirst, that word cry in the Greek, I told you this morning, I can't get it out of my mind. It means to shriek loudly. He got some people's attention. He said, if any man thirst, forget about your rituals. Forget about that little hole down there in the ground called the pool of Siloam. I've got the living water. And any man who will come to me and drink of it, you can have rivers of it flowing out of you. Amen. Rivers of it. You don't have to go down and get a little pot and dip it in there and do your chants and do all your routines and do your worship order and all this stuff. No, you can have rivers of living water. You can have an experience within your heart wherever you go. And like I said, the wonderful thing about it, it's inside you. So when the attacks are bombarding you from the outside, hey, amen, you don't have to dry up spiritually. When your mind is troubling you, you don't have to dry up spiritually because you have a well, you have a source of water within you, and it's the only thing that you have that will sustain you. Amen. Don't put your faith and trust in Brother Frazier. I can't sustain you. Don't put your faith and trust in anybody else in this congregation. They can't sustain you. But Jesus Christ can, can sustain you. Amen. Another passage of scripture that's similar to this one. Psalms chapter 46. Let's flip over there and read that. I had it as part of my notes this morning. That I was going to read that. But I never did get to it. That's okay. We're going to get to it tonight. Psalms 46. Because I want you to see something tonight. I want you to see something about this river about this living water. Psalms chapter 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. It says, take time to think about that. I'm telling you tonight, take time to think about that. Though the oceans roar, the oceans are always symbolic of turmoil, conflict, strife. Though the oceans roar in your life, and though the mountains, the things that you held in high esteem, and they shake and they dissolve into the midst of that roaring ocean, God is our refuge and a very present help in time of need. Amen. He's still the same God for the writer that wrote that right there. He's the same God for me. And He's the same God for you. God is a refuge and a very present help in the time of trouble. Though the earth be removed. That's a scary thought for me. Though the earth be removed. You ever thought about that? Think that it through in your mind for just a second. Poof. All of a sudden, the earth is gone. And you're no longer standing on anything. You're falling down, 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 or I don't even know whether you'd fall or you'd go up or sideways. I don't know what would happen. But think about the earth being removed for a second. Let me tell you something. There's times and troubles that come into people's life, and they have nowhere to turn. They think that the earth has been removed. Amen. I've been there. 
where there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason or purpose to anything. The earth has been removed and the oceans are roaring and the mountains are shaking and everything is coming apart at the seams. Amen. But praise God, our God is a very present help. He is a refuge. He is a river of living water. He is Jesus Christ. And he stood up in that temple day. He said, if any man thirst, let him come. Let him come. If any man is in turmoil, if his mountains are shaking and his oceans are roaring, let him come and drink. Don't ever forget about the drinking part. Because that's the partaking part. That's the saturation, the rejuvenation, the renewing part. You've got to come and then you've got to get you a big drink of what Jesus Christ has to offer to your life if you're going to experience the blessing. Amen. Our God is a refuge, a strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Coming on down, verse 4. Well, actually, let's read it again. It thrills my soul. God's word never grows old. God is our refuge and a strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Praise the Lord. Fear destroys. Fear kills. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed and though mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. For there is a river, for there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Praise the Lord, saints of God. God shall help her. Who's he talking about? The city of God. The tabernacles of God. Tabernacles. Amen. Did you see the plural on the end of that? You're one of his tabernacles. You're one of their tabernacles. If you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're living his life, if his life is living in you, you're one of his tabernacles. And it says right here in my Bible that God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of her. Think about that for a minute. What did Jesus? Is, what was one of the names that they called Jesus when he came to earth? Emmanuel, God with us. God is in the midst of her. The exact same thing that I was talking about with the fortress and the attacks from the outside and the attacks from the inside. If God is in you, if he is the source of the living water, none of those things shall move you. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. The Spirit of God always moves and speaks in a still, small voice. Amen. In your hearts, Brother Fraser might be up here and get very loud. But what's happening in your hearts and in your minds is a still, small voice that's speaking to you. And that small voice was speaking all over the place this morning to people's hearts and souls. That still, small voice. That's one of the signatures of God's moving. That's one of the signatures of God's presence. It's not an ecstatic experience with tingles running up and down your spine it is a still small voice that speaks truth into your heart and mind amen, amen. be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the heathen i will be exalted in the earth the lord of hosts is with us 
The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. As you can probably tell from this evening and from this morning, I've been studying a lot about river and water. God's living water. God's living river. Do you know that rivers are spoken of from the very beginning of the Bible all the way to the very end of the Bible? In the Garden of Eden, there said there was a river that proceeded out eastward. And what did it do? It branched out into four streams. Amen. Assembling this the same thing that we're talking about. The streams of God. The streams of the river shall make glad the cities of God. Or the city of God. Let's see if I got that right. There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. All the way through the Bible, we hear and see about waters and rivers. They started out in Eden. We read in Ezekiel chapter 47 about a river that proceeded out from the threshold of the door. In fact, let's go over there and read that. Ezekiel chapter 47. We're going to read probably about nine verses or ten verses. I can't remember. Nine verses. Ezekiel chapter 47. Afterwards, he brought me again to the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looks eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. And again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterwards, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. Praise the Lord. For the waters were risen and the waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river there were many trees. There were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issued out towards the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. Listen to that now. Whithersoever the river comes, it shall live. What did Jesus say? Any man that thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Anybody that comes to Jesus and drinks of that living water, you're going to be a living soul. You're going to be a healed soul. And the writer here in, in Ezekiel was seeing a picture of that. He said, Afterwards, he brought me again to the door of the house. There's only one door into the house of God, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. Behold, all others that come up any other way, they are thieves and robbers. They break in to steal and kill and destroy. We're talking about the door of Jesus Christ here tonight. And we're talking about the river, the Holy Spirit being poured out and everything that it comes into contact with. Whethersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish because of these waters shall come thither. <coughs> For they shall be healed. That word is used several times. They shall be healed. And everything shall live whither the river I'm so thankful for that. I know I'm healed. I know that God healed me of my sin and corruption. He healed me of all of that that I had ever done. He gave me a new nature. 
He took out the old nature and he put in a new nature. He gave me a heart after his heart. Amen. And whithersoever his spirit comes, he'll do the same exact work. He will heal. He will heal. You go over to Revelations chapter 22 for just a second. And we're just hitting a couple of the highlights along the way. But the Bible speaks of these living waters throughout from beginning to end. Revelations chapter 22, he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there were the tree. Was there the tree of life? Here again, we have the river. We have the water of God going out. Jesus said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The same living waters that we're reading about here in Revelations chapter 22 can flow out of your soul and out of your life and out of your heart. And Jesus said again over in verse 17, anyone who is a thirst, let him come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. We are physical creatures, but we are also spiritual creatures. We were designed for spiritual things. We were designed for something much greater than this physical life that we live. We were designed for heaven. We were designed for companionship with God. And the only way to access that is through that living water that Jesus Christ made available to each and every one of us. Isaiah 33 I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but it's good for your Bible skills. Maybe you'll win a Bible drill someday. Isaiah 33. Verse 21. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams Wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, and the Lord is our lawgiver, and the Lord is our king, and he will save us. What was the writer trying to get across there? But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams. He was trying to teach them about the Holy Spirit moving into their hearts. He was trying to teach them about what Jesus Christ stood up in the temple and cried. And he said, I'm talking about a river, but there ain't going to be no boats in this river. There ain't going to be no oars in this river, folks. This is a river of life, of living water. Not water that you put a boat in and transport yourself down to some destination, but a water that you get in and you wash yourself and you live and you move and you dwell in it and you enjoy it and you live in it and you have access to the tree of life that's growing right there on the bank with its 12 fruits. Oh, what a glorious picture. What a glorious picture that we can have that living water, the source of it, the wellspring of it, Right here. Endless supply. Right here. See, a lot of people come to church thinking they're going to get a supply of it. You got to have the source inside of you. If you don't have the source inside of you, you're not going to find much supply here. You're going to be dipping with a little spoon trying to fill up your own broken cistern that we spoke about this morning. You need the supply. Amen. We need the supply. Don't be looking to the church to fill, fulfill your needs. You need to get in touch with the source and the supply of it. The gift of God, which is this living water, is God Himself. This living water is God Himself. The Holy Spirit is God Himself. He's just as much God as Jesus Christ was, and He's just as much God as the Almighty Creator, God. 
Father God, if you want to refer to him as that. you got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is just as much God as, all, as the other two are. And God gives us the Holy Spirit. He's God. And he lives within your heart and in your soul. That is the living water. That is the gift. He is the ever-giving source of all refreshment. He is the ever-giving source of all strength. He is the ever-giving source of all blessing. There is no other source. The river with its streams is God Himself in the outflow and communication of His own grace, of His own grace to your soul. That is the outflow of God. That is this river living water that he so freely gives us. The sea that we read about in the first part of this represents turmoil and struggle. But this little stream of God's presence overcomes it. Go back with me to Psalms chapter 46 for a minute. Notice how it's worded. It says, there is a river, the streams thereof, the streams thereof. See, I just got a little stream, but that little stream is able to conquer all the turmoil that was spoke of in the first four verses about the oceans roaring and swelling, about the mountains being shook and dissolved down into the ocean. This little stream, this little portion of the river that he blessed me with, it's able to overcome all those things. All adversity. Doesn't matter what it is. All opposition. This little stream that God gave me. I can't imagine how big the river is if I just got a little stream. Praise the Lord. I don't know how to quantify that. But this little bitty stream is able to conquer all these oceans and things that we face. You know what? Water is amazing. Physical water is an amazing substance. You can almost infinitely divide water. You know that? We read there in, in Genesis about the river proceeding out of the Garden of Eden, and then it divides in the stream. We read there about a river. There is a river, the streams thereof. What are we talking about? A division of the river. Water can almost be divided infinitely. But every time it's divided, and every time that it's passed out, it takes the form and the shape of the vessel that it's placed into. Think about that for a minute. The scriptures teach us time and time again the Holy Spirit is it's symbolized by water, by living water. The living water can be divided almost infinitely. And every time it's divided, it will take the shape and the form of the vessel that it's put into. If your vessel is not in good shape, you're not going to have a whole lot of spirit. You will have the Holy Spirit in the ability that you've been the ability of your vessel is to hold it. If your vessel is all broken up, if your vessel's got holes of sin and everything else in it, it's going to leak right out. And it will take the form and shape of whatever it's given, whatever opportunity that it's given. Think about that for a minute. God can't work in an unclean vessel. God can't work in a broken vessel. It drips out. It drains out. But the Holy Spirit is given to each and every one that will believe on Jesus Christ. And that's why we see all these different levels of spirituality and experience of salvation. Because every vessel is only able to hold a certain amount in a certain form in a certain shape. Amen. Go over with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 for a minute. We'll see this division. We'll see Paul talking about it. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit. You want to know something? That's why a lot of people can't get along in, in the family of God. 
That's why a lot of Christians can't get along. There's one self-same spirit. And all the time, that spirit will manifest itself to the other spirit. If we have the same spirit, we're going to get along. We're not going to have any problems. But the problem is, a lot of people don't have the spirit. They don't have the spirit of God. There is one spirit. There are all kinds of different gifts. There's all kinds of different vessels. There's all kinds of level of spirituality and experience. But there is one spirit. One spirit. But all these worketh that one, the self-same Spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many, all the members being many, you can have many different kinds of members, but they're all one body. So also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile or American or Native American or Hispanic or black or African American or whatever you want to call yourself, we are but one spirit. Amen. One spirit. There's not these different spirits out here. There's some people that want to talk about doctrines and all these things. I don't have time to talk to you because you don't have the spirit. We don't have the same spirit. You have a spirit of confrontation. We can't have a very fruitful dialogue if we don't have the same spirit. Amen. But there is one spirit and one body. I met a man Monday, I think it was, right down the road here. It's a black man. We got to talking about spiritual things. Then we got to talking about the topics of the day. There was riots going on in Baltimore at the time. We got to talking about race. I said, you know what, brother? I found racism is a whole lot worse up here than it is back in Virginia or in the South. I found it's a whole lot more prevalent up here than it is back there. But I said, you know what? When you open your mouth, the inside of it is pink, just like mine. And guess what? When we're baptized into the body of Christ, we're one body. Whether we're black, white, red, pink, purple, it don't matter. We're all one body. And we have one spirit. And it's divided to each of us according to His will. And according to your capacities to to use that spirit. Amen. There ain't no room for racism in the family of God. I have been so stirred about that thing, I don't know what to do. I read in the book of Acts over there where Paul was stirred, and that's one of the things that stirred me, is racism. There's no room for hate in the family of God. Not only in our congregation and in our midst, but outside. You know those guys that are running up and down the streets of Baltimore and jumping up and down on police cars in Baltimore and beating them up? You know what they need? Jesus Christ. You want to know what the problem is? Sin. The problem is not poverty. The problem is not all these other things that they want to lay the blame on and they look everywhere else but sin. And there's one solution. The Lord Jesus Christ. And if they be filled with the Spirit, they'll clean up that police car and they'll wax that thing and they'll say, Brother, love you. Love you. And you know what? The police officer, if he'll get the sin out of his life and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll go down there and say, Brother, I know you're having a hard time. I know you don't live in the best of places. I just want to let you know that I love you. And I care about your soul and I care about you as a human being. There's no room for hate. In the family of God. None. Zero. I don't find any license for it here in the Bible. If you can find one, let me know. We're still talking about rivers of living water. We're still talking about the Holy Spirit of God. Having the river supplies all of our needs.
every one of our needs. That's what Jesus was saying. I told you that this morning. When he stood up and said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He's saying, I have all that you need. Coulter's Chapel, I have all that you need. Come, drink. I have all that you need. Everything that the human being needs can be found in this river. The river supplies gladness, as we read over in Psalms chapter 46. I'm going to go back there one more time. In verse 4, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad all the gladness that you need, all the happiness, the contentment can be found in this river of God. The river supplies gladness. The river supplies complete fulfillment of every human need. For our wills, for our stubborn, hard-hearted wills, we're all self-willed creatures. Some of us more strongly than others. But for our wills, we have His perfect authority. For our hearts, for our broken hearts, for our hurting hearts, for our troubled hearts, we have His perfect and chainless love. Changeless love. For our lack of understanding and maturity, we have His eternal truth. For our consciences, which trouble us and disturb us, and which the devil uses to bring back up again and again and again. What do we have? We have his infinite peace. You've got a troubled conscience tonight, you can have the peace of God through that river, through the Holy Spirit living in your heart. For my emptiness, his fullness. For my imperfection, His perfection. For my inconsistency, His immutability. Everything that we need. Everything that we need. When you've got the source welling up within your souls, no attack from the enemy can cut off your supply of this living water. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have attacks. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials. What it means is she shall not be moved. See, the devil's not going to quit. He's going to keep on attacking. You're going to have all these trials and troubles and struggles. Every one of you can raise your hand and say, yes, sir, Brother Frazier, you're exactly right. I got saved and the trials and the tribulations and the pain and the suffering and the hurts and the discomforts and all those things, they're still here. The struggle, the struggle with my human nature, it's still here. It's still here. The struggle with my tendencies, still here. But guess what? My Bible says, she shall not be moved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be swayed by your tendencies. You don't have to be overcome by your troubles. You don't have to be overcome by your habits. You don't have to be overwhelmed with sorrow and despair. Because there is a river of living water springing up within you that will sustain you through every trial. And you can boldly say, I shall not be moved if you will stand on that. I'll let you have the thoughts this evening. We could have a couple of verses of song. I can't get away from the message of the water and the river. It's been resounding in my head for days. You're seeing the results of some of the study (laughs) that God has led me on in reference to this river of life. Do you have your little branch of it? Do you have streams of it in your heart?
Do you have a wellspring flowing up within you? Back in Virginia, there was a rock down in Keene, Virginia. If you ever want to look that up, I don't know if you'd even be able to find it. But as you go down this old country road that winds, y'all have straight roads here in Michigan, but in Virginia, we have windy roads. They kind of follow the mountainsides. They follow the footpaths that people walked into that country back in the 1500s. And the road, footpaths just became roads. But as you go down this one road in Keene, there's a giant rock on the left-hand side of the road. I can still see it just as beautiful as, as if I was standing there. And at the base of that rock, there is a stream of water that big flowing out. It's a beautiful sight. All the locals will go down there. They'll fill up all their water jugs. The health department come by and tried to block it off. Said, y'all can't drink out of that. It's not safe. They tore down the stuff and kept on filling up their water jugs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's people that tell you that kind of spiritual experience doesn't exist. It's unsafe for you. I'm here to tell you. Knock down the obstructions and get you some. It's sweet. It's beautiful. It's what every child of God has already been given. It's your privilege. It's your heritage, folks. It is your heritage that God has given you. Fully access it. Fully walk in the beauty and the holiness of it. Amen. There is a river. And the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. You are his city. You are one of his tabernacles. If any man thirst, let him come and take of the water of life freely. It's there for you. Amen.